All right. Last time we left off, we talked about the death of Zoo and Lai. Let me uh, recap our characters for you guys. So first we had uh, Dun Xiaoping, this guy right here. So Dun Xiaoping, who was critical of Mao Zedong, got kicked out of government, was sent to a tractor factory, came back. Then after the death of Zoo and Lai, got kicked out again and sent to the tractor factory again. So that's currently where he's at in our story. Uh, Wa Gua Fun, he's the number two guy in China. So basically, um, Zhu and Lai was kind of the guy in China that was kind of running stuff. But Zhu and Lai died, and then who Hua Gua Fun then moved up into his spot. So if Mao Zedong dies, he's the next person that's supposed to take over. Uh, Zhu and Lai we talked about and how he died. Uh, Lin Biao didn't trust Mao Zedong's wife, um, Jian Qing, who I'm just going to call Madame Mao. Uh, he didn't trust Madame Mao. Uh, tries to assassinate Mao Zedong, doesn't go well, uh, tries to escape the country, plane gets shot down when he tries to escape. All right, so that was a kind of a recap of our characters. Now, after the death of Zhu and Lai, a couple of months later, uh, that's when Mao Zedong dies. Go ahead and make a bullet, and we're going to write down death of Mao 99, 1976. So bullet death of Mao. September 9th of 1976. So Mao Zedong ends up dying uh, on September 9th of 1976. Uh, he ends up dying. And when he ends up dying, what ends up happening is immediately after he dies, uh, Hua Gua Fun, he's the guy that's supposed to take over after Mao Zedong. So after Mao Zedong uh, died or stepped down from leadership, uh, Hua Gua Fun is supposed to step in and then be the new leader of China. However, what ends up happening instead is it turns out that Lin Biao's suspicion of Mao Zedong's wife, Madame Mao, was correct. Uh, she'd been plotting all along. And when Mao dies, um, she takes over with uh, three other people, and they end up taking over control of China instead of Hua Guafan. Uh, go ahead and make a one. And we're going to write down Gang of Four. So one Gang of Four. So this is called the Gang of Four. I says Madame Mao and then three other people. And they end up actually taking over control of China instead of Hua Gua Fun. And Hua Gua Fun's not very happy about this because, you know, he, he's the one that's supposed to be in charge, uh, not this group of four people, not this uh, gang of four. So the gang of four end up taking over. And after they take over, uh, Hua Gua Fun immediately starts plotting against them. And then one month later, uh, he is able to arrest all four of them and from in jail, and then he takes over as the leader of the country. So Gang of Four takes over for a month. Madame Mao is one of the people that's in the group that takes over. Hua Gua Fun then organizes a coup. A coup is when you overthrow the government against them, arrests all four of them, and fr throws them all in jail. All right, go ahead and make a number two. A coup by Hua Gua Fun. So two coup by Hua Gua Fun. And coup is once again when you overthrow the government. Although I'm not really too sure if it's a coup since he was the one that was supposed to be in charge from the get-go. And uh, he's just, you know, kind of taking over control of something he was already supposed to be in control over. But nonetheless, uh, coup by Hua Gua Fun. Okay, and then number three, Hua's claim as Mao's successor. So Hua claims claim as Mao's successor. So Hua then takes his claim as the successor to Mao. So then he's now in charge of China. So now he's in control. So what ends up happening to the Gang of Four? Uh, well, they all have life sentences in prison in China. And by life sentence, I don't mean 20 years, like in the United States. Uh, life in prison in China is until you die. All right, that, that's how it is in China. Um, Madame Mao ends up dying, I believe, of throat cancer uh, in the 1980s. So basically, kind of think 10 years after the Gang of Four took over in China, uh, she ends up dying of throat cancer and cancer uh, in prison. So there you go. All right, so anyway, so Hua Gua Fun, now he's in charge. So what happens will he, while he's in charge? Well, he brings back Dun Xiaoping. Go ahead and make a bullet and write down the rise of Dun Xiaoping. So bullet rise of Deng Xiaoping. So Deng Xiaoping, uh, he's a guy that had constantly been kicked out, sent to a tractor factory, and he eventually, you know, he had been kicked out before. He comes back in 1973, gets kicked out again in 1977. 
Uh, and then he's allowed to come back in 1977 when Hua Fun takes over. So Hua Fun takes over and he's like, hey, Deng Xiaoping, you can come back from the tractor factory and work in government again. And Deng Xiaoping is like, ah, sweet. And as soon as Deng Xiaoping comes back into government, um, let's go and write this down first. Let's go and make it one. One, started to gain power in early 1977. So he comes back from government all right, in early 1977. So Mao Zedong dies in 1976. Deng Xiaoping comes back into politics, back from Tractor Factory in early 1977. And once he kind of comes back in 1977, he starts to kind of take over a whole bunch of like different roles and positions. Remember, he had been running day-to-day affairs of the country with Zhu and Lai. So he was already kind of familiar with how to run things and such. So he was already kind of running a lot of things and he was on a lot of different commissions. And eventually what ends up happening is Deng Xiaoping is like, hey, Hua Gua Fun, really appreciate the fact that you invited me to come back in the government uh, and things are running pretty good right now. But uh, me and everybody else that are part of the Polybureau, Polybureau is like the elite 20 people that run China. Me and everybody else in the Polybureau decided, you know what, uh, it's, it's better if I, I just leave the country instead of you. So uh, Hua Gua Fun, bah, it kicked out of power again. Uh, and now Deng Xiaoping takes over as leader. Uh, go ahead and make a two. And we're just going to write down leader by 1978. So Deng Xiaoping kicks Hua Guafun out of power. Second time Hua Guafun's got kicked out of power. And now Deng Xiaoping is in charge of China. Uh, however, Hua Guafun will be part of the Bureau. They elite like 20 people that run China. So he will be part of that group uh, going forward as well. who kind of stay part of them. So, still an elite person that runs the country. He just isn't like the guy running the country or even the top five guys running the country. But he's like part of the top 20, you know. So, Deng Xiaoping's in charge. Well, what ends up happening while he's in charge? Well, he wasn't very happy with the Vietnam. Now, the United States had fought in Vietnam in the late 1960s, early 1970s. Uh, trying to keep North Vietnam from conquering South Vietnam. I know very similar to the Korean War when North Korea invades South Korea and the North Koreans were communists and South Koreans were a democracy and we end up going to South Korea to help out against North Koreans. Same thing happens in Vietnam. The North Koreans are communists, the South Koreans are a democracy. We go to South Korea to help out the South Koreans against the North Koreans, or against the North Vietnamese. Sorry, we went to South Vietnam to help out the South Vietnamese against the North Vietnamese. Uh, however, we instead in like instead of South Korea, in which we stayed in South Vietnam, we just kind of bailed after a while. And then North Vietnam conquered South Vietnam and then Vietnam became a communist nation. However, we get along fine with Vietnam nowadays. So, you know, I, I, I guess it works out sometimes, although North Korea is definitely not the same because they are somewhat crazy and so forth and threatening nuke us all the time. We'll talk more about that in the future. I have like a video about it that uh, we might get into. In any case. So. Vietnam, which was a ch- communist government, they said the border was a particular place with China. So China and Vietnam, they're like right next to each other. Now, let me pull up a, uh, let me pull up a map here so you guys can see their borders and such. So they're kind of right next to each other. And because they're right next to each other, there's a bit of debate about where the border was between Vietnam and Vietnam and China. Okay, so you can kind of see right here. Here's the border right there of uh, Vietnam. So there's a border right there, right next to China. All right, so they're right next to China. Bam, right here. There's a border with Vietnam right here. All right, so there's a dispute about where exactly this border was. Okay, so where exactly is it? Like, is it here? Is it up here? Is it down here? Where exactly is the border at? So there's a border dispute between these between the Chinese and the Vietnamese. I go ahead and make a bullet and write down Sino Vietnamese War. So, bullet Sino Vietnamese War. So, it's a border conflict between the Chinese and the Vietnamese. One border war in 1979. <clears throat> so, it's not full on like all out war or anything. Instead, it's simply just a conflict over where exactly is the border at with the Chinese trying to push into Vietnam to where they said the border was and the Vietnamese trying to protect where they thought the border was and the two having a conflict against each other to decide kind of where exactly that border was at. Uh, after you have one border war in 1979, I'm going to make it two. So what ends up happening? 
Well, eventually the Vietnamese are able to use enough guerrilla tactics that the Chinese just kind of give up and leave. So two beaten back by Vietnamese irregulars. So once again, uh, Vietnamese are using the guerrilla tactics, which they had used against the United States in late 1960s and early 1970s. So they were pretty experienced in warfare by this point in time. And they just kind of used the same tactics against the Chinese. Chinese got annoyed and eventually we were like, fine, we'll just, we'll just leave. All right. So once Deng Xiaoping's in charge, you know, we, we know that Mao Zedong made all these like five year plans in which he was like, hey, here's a five year plan to make iron production in China, which didn't work. And then he had a five year plan about increasing agriculture production, which didn't work and caused the deaths of millions of people. So Deng Xiaoping, he's like, all right, look, instead of doing these five year plans, I have a better idea. A 10 year plan. You make it double the length, it will totally work. So make a bullet and go ahead and write down 10-year plan. So bullet 10-year plan. So he's got a 10-year plan. And in his 10-year plan, there are four places or four things that he wants to modernize, that he wants to make into a higher tech. Now, after you have bullet 10-year plan, we're going to make a one. We'll write down agriculture. Two will be industry. Three, national defense. And four is going to be science and technology. Okay. So one, agriculture, two, industry, three, national defense, and four, science and technology. Those are the four areas that he wants to work on and improve for China. That's all those four areas he wants to work on. Uh, we'll talk about those four areas in more detail next time. So once you've got those finished written up, you're all set with today's notes.